praise of the God. I thank you, Michael, for uh, very entertaining uh, and uh, thoughtful presentation. Um, it, it's a, a question I've often uh, pondered: the off-site manufacturer and the potential for the west of Ireland to actually keep jobs here. Uh, I was doing a, a class last week with the second years, and uh, I mentioned uh, in May this year, for example, I was in uh, just outside Wembley Stadium. Uh, 22-storey uh, student accommodation block, visiting some of our students on placement there. And uh, I turned around and, and three lorry loads of precast wall in from Oran Moor, precasting Galway, pulled in the gate behind me. And um, uh, also Shay Murta, who spoke at the contract. Uh, I visited the Crossrail project as well with another student, was the largest project in Europe. And uh, Shay Murta, again from Ireland, providing the, the tunnel under the Thames. So, uh, uh, definitely a way to go and, and a way to keep jobs locally as well. Um, so perhaps nothing gives us uh, so much pleasure in the Department of Building and Civil Engineering than uh, when a, one of our own comes home to uh, present to us. Uh, so our next speaker is um, Noel Conroy. Noel is a, a GMIT construction management graduate uh, and is now head of the Irish operations uh, for MJ Conroy, uh, overseeing uh, all operations in the Irish sector of the, uh, uh, can't say a construction and property group and many other things uh, since I've been chatting to uh, Noel. Uh, so today Noel's going to give a very personal view uh, and cover the evolution of the MJ Conroy group, his family business, and it'll also reflect on uh, working with uh, foreign multinationals, work with John up at HP in Park Moore now. Uh, and also some words of advice on students that follow him as graduates of GMIT and uh, uh, just some pointers and things he's learned along the way. So uh, we'll ask Noel to come forward now. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, Martin, thanks for the introduction. Um, I got a phone call back in October, I think, or November, late October, November, and I didn't recognise the number, and I said, look, I won't bother listening to the voice, and I'd ring back, and who was it, but uh, John Hanno answered anyway, and my heart, I just had a big smile on my face, and the first thing he said to me is, I bet you're sorry you answered that phone call, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, look, I answered this, I came in to meet himself, I'm Mark, and to be honest, I'm, I'm thrilled to be back, it's a, it's a big, big honour for me, myself, and my family to put our business on display here, so thanks for having me along. So, uh, so I'm head of our Irish operation, you'll see later on we've diversified into a property and into an active agriculture industry as well, and high end construction va value pro pro projects, a lot of ph pharmaceutical projects. As well. I turned my phone off anyway, so I'm like, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That wasn't my phone, mine's off. Um, so yeah, I started in GMIT, I came through the Castle Bar route, kept it local, um, down, kept, kept my mail routes, uh, I came up here to go with, did the DIP and the Bachelor of Science and Construction Management in 2003-2005. Um, we're a family firm over, as Mike said, over three generations. Uh, my grandfather, uh, Mikey J. Conroy, started the business in 1932. Um, my dad and his two brothers um, took on the business and developed it up through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, 2000s, and the third generation has come through. Um, Someone, I was just saying it to Michael earlier, someone said to me last week, um, the second generation is 50% likely to, you know, lose the, run the business into the ground, the third generation is 80% likely, so <laughs> uh, we'll give it a, we'll, uh, we'll try and avoid that stuff, but um, we'll see how we go anyway. Um, we're, we put a huge amount of emphasis in our business and before me as well on um, relationships, and Michael kind of echoed it earlier, we see the construction industry changing, it's not doesn't seem to be where there's bill of quantities coming in and prices up. 
and you know best price wins all the time. There's a lot of relationship focus work whereby the client wants to establish a relationship with you, know the quality of work they're going to do, and bring value engineering to the table straight off. A lot of the clients that we work with, the FDI clients, they're you know they're high quality people working with them. They know if you're basically ripping them off or not, so they know that you're doing cost sensitive work for them and you're doing good value for them. So a relationship is, is a huge part of our business and long-term relationships. A huge part of our business is long-term clients, um, which you see later on as well. So we, we've concentrated all this in the, um, on the construction side of our business, in the pharmaceutical, uh, high-end commercial and IT turnkey projects as well. We've never really got into the re residential space for, you know, there's pros and cons to that throughout the years, but um, that picture there is the city centre of Con, my, my grandfather there. Uh, so that established my grandfather, began as a construction company, carried out main contracting works on commercial, a lot of ba when Bank of Ireland and AIB bought a lot of smaller banks, that was the sort of projects our dad and um, my our, our uncles got involved in the changing of them into uh, Bank of Ireland and AIB, and um, focused a lot and continued to focus on the pharmaceutical uh, industry to work with the likes of uh, my, my Michael and his uh, his firm in, in that space as well, and commercial property and um, commercial IT fit out. We quickly built up a re reputation as one of the most respected main contractors in the west of Ireland. And I said just that reputation and relationships are a huge thing for us and something that we all put a huge amount of time into. Commercial property, we diversified in the 1970s um, into the commercial property space. Two of the first kind of big, bigger plays were um, two of the probably well-known well properties in Galway, uh, Island House in Cathedral Square and Moralty House in uh, Luxury, which we still own, operate and manage. Um. The relationship, as I said, is a big thing for us and the high-end uh, high construction projects. We've we're with Boston Scientific. We've actually almost like facilities group permanently in that facility. Um, in there, a strong staff of between 10 to 20 guys in there on a permanent basis. So, Boston Scientific has been a very good company with us, and we see our, we see ourselves not as a as a contractor with them, but as a partner trying to bring value engineering solutions to them. And likewise, with the likes of Allergan. You're trying, there's a huge value in trying to get to know, know your client, know your client's business so that even before they see a problem or if there's a solution there, that you're bringing that solution to them. You're, you're becoming part of, their, part of their business, their day-to-day -day business. Um, as long, along with the commercial properties in Galway, we also started building strong relationships with the, the IDA, um, done a lot of the advanced factories. Um, like other similar Galway builders as well, along the western uh, seaboard. Um, these are some of the ones in Galway, Merit Medical, Medtronic and EA Sports. There were projects that we actually funded with the IDA. Sorry, we funded. IDA gave us, the site, gave us the site for them. Um, that gave the facility for the IDA to attract clients in, um, fully funded by ourselves. Um, and they turned out to be some of the, you know, the biggest employers, Merit Medical, Medtronic, yeah, sports huge employers now in Galway, so that's a huge privilege for us to be part of. And developing them sort of projects was a, an aim of ours, and continues to be an aim of ours because it keeps us in the space of working with the high-end clients, where they very much value a relationship type of business with you. And that's just a, some of the clients that we do that are there to work um, work with. As the guy said earlier on, the FDI is a big, um, big focus on the western re region, so obviously that, that's what we're targeting as well. In the late 1990s, um, we, when some of the eastern European countries started to come into uh, the European Union, we started, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, what's property like in the in the in them countries. So we did look at them. We dipped our toe in it. Um, uh, firstly in Latvia and uh, Lithuania in 1998-99. Um, we met some commercial property players there that worked out well. Again, we focused on commercial, we didn't get into the resident residential side. And we also dipped our toe into agriculture actually in Latvia as well, where we actually started acquiring individual plots of land and started 
we formed in a, a farm around between two and three thousand hectare farm. So that was a, we found that was a really exciting business to get into. There was good capital growth in the in the value that we got into, and we've seen that the Irish property industry was flying here as well. But um, you know, so we it was a good it worked out a good play for us at the time. So we're interested in it. In 2003, 2005, we diversified further into Serbia. Um, it kind of gives quivers to a lot of people when you mention you know, the Serbian, but it's, it's a really exciting place to be. You can see in the map there the strategic location of it is on the doorstep of the, the Middle East and Europe. So um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that now. Um, instead, we've got into commercial property space, not really residential, with logistics centres in Riga and Belgrade. Uh, for instance, in Belgrade, it's a it's a logistics centre with Kuhn and Hagel, again aiming towards the high-end clients that there's a long-term, uh, long-term future with office accommodation in Vilnius, Baltic Air with the company that was in there, um, and commercial agriculture. We got into commercial agriculture in quite a, a big way in Serbia, um, where we bought um, five pharma companies out there um, from the Serbian Stock Exchange, and we're now farming 6,000 hectares. I think that's of 14 and a half, nearly 15,000 acres. Um, so we've actually intensive commercial and uh, tillage farming out there. Um, again, the client base we have out there is Syngenta and Pioneer, two, two of the biggest seed manufacturers in the, in the country where we grow a high-end crop, a certified crop for them. It's not a normal mercantile crop. Um, we're employing, uh, I think, about 200 people out there at the minute. And we've large dairy enterprise producing around 8 million Use of the month a year. So again, that's what with, uh, with him like. So we're a huge producer of different types of crops out there. Pepsi is one of our biggest clients as well. We actually grow a huge amount of potatoes for Pepsi. Pepsi bought Pepsi don't put potatoes in their drinks. They actually bought a lot of people kind of raise their eyebrows at me when I tell that one. But Pepsi bought um, the company that manufactures, I think, Lay's crisps are one of those big crisps. So they have a huge market out there. So we actually grow the potatoes for Pepsi. So again, like the business that we have here in Ireland, the high-end construction, we try to target a certain level of client all the time that requires a huge amount of investment in your time and work to establish a relationship and a trust. But once you get there, we feel it's really worth it. So Dr. Diversification, all the people say, you know, why did, why did you do that? You know, it was a big play, a big risk. It was in 2005. Um, you know, it was... The Irish market was absolutely flying, you know, commercial property, everyone was having a great time altogether. So um, I remember um, a story I often tell is that uh, we priced a, a local enough project, I uh, won't get too specific, but it was around a 10, 10 million euro project. And, um, you know, we said we'd go quite competitive for it. Uh, so we went competitive for it. And we didn't get the job, the guy that got it, um, we put in a price around 10 million, they, they got the job over 9 million. And the guy that won it was a carpenter uh, a few years beforehand, you know, literally working out of his van. So that was back in that time, and we kind of had a, took stock of ourselves and said, look, this thing is going crazy. So um, we actually we, we sold some of our Irish property portfolio um, in 2005 and went into the Serbian market and produced the farming industry where we thought there's always going to be a big demand for food. So, um, you know, we said we'd keep our high-end construction projects here, but our clients such as the Allergan, Baxter, Boston Scientific, HP, well, HP wasn't client at the time, but COVIDian and that sort of projects, and spread our risk, diversify. So it was a big play, a big risk, but it, did, it worked out well, because um, as John put up the graph earlier on with his curve um, around 2010, you know, we looked at the HP project then, it, turned, it gave us a quite a strong balance sheet. So we, did, we felt we had a diverse, flexible range of businesses and and that would facilitate growth quite easily. And it reduced the impact of diversification, reduced the impact of the recession on our company and strengthened our balance sheet. So that brought us to 2011, um, where that diversification played back into the case study I, that I worked with John on. Um, Great job, highly recommend them. <laughs> um, for our for HP here in Galway, which is great news for Galway that HP were they're here they're there thirty five years to digital and all that. Um, they said, look, we're going to reinvest in Galway. They have a headcount, so they put a requirement out, and 
Uh, Patricia there gave me the call and said, no, would you be interested in bidding for this? So I said, absolutely, let's, uh, let's go for it. So it was a really exciting project for God and I felt it could change the landscape, you know, of what we do and, you know, landmark project for, for Gola that could let other things happen as well. So HP sent out a request for a proposal in June 11. Um, they had a, they filled out their objective, their design objective, their design objective, you know, they wanted to, about 100,000 square feet of a, of a building, had to be flexible design, had to be able to be sublet and um, fit all their open plan requirements at the same time. You have to obtain plan information, you have to fund it, build it and asset manage it. So we put a team together, a very strong local team. Um, with the guys here, was led by Patricia uh, through DPZ, John O'Regan and ACOM. We use uh, Taylor Architects, um, Castle Bar, uh, Arabs here in Galway as well, and RPS as well. So really, really strong thing. That's that's the site there. Um, most of you are probably familiar with it, Boston Scientific, and um, outlined in red. The box to the top right-hand corner of the red box is their old building, 130,000 square feet, uh, which we bought with the um, with the deal. So the deal the deal was a by a lease back. Yeah. So the information to be provided with the submission was a, um, the information on the entity making the bid ourselves, proposed heads of terms, uh, confirming you comply with the HP spec, which was quite demanding at the time. So the design spec and a performance spec with the building, proof of funding, and that goes back to my previous point of diversification. Um, you know, we're bidding against all of the, you know, the top guys in the country at the time and, you know, we were pretty unknown to, I suppose, a lot of people, but we had a really strong balance sheet and continue to do so. So that, that really gave the client a lot of confidence in us. Um, track record of similar projects, which we had a track record of similar projects, maybe not all as big, but track record of the high-end construction and doing a turnkey project with the idea, so that all fitted well as well. The professional team dedicated to, to it, I feel we're probably one of the strongest teams in the country available that could do that team and in my opinion it was a huge part of us um, winning that project from the likes of the DPZ and ACOM to do that proof insurance, we'd know, you have to have your, your PI insurance as well your, as your normal contractor's insurance and the usual schedule of landlord's credits. So the bid submission um, was uh, in 2011 and HP reviews and interviews, there's presentations, all sorts of stuff like that, and reviews between the two design teams. Heads of terms are agreed. The bid was awarded um, in March 2012. Um, I'm just trying to emphasize there the, the amount of work, and Michael kind of mentioned it earlier, with the huge amount of planning that goes in, but not as much here. It was more into legal and financial and, and design, not as much off-site construction. But the amount, the amount of work that could happen in one of those projects, the huge amount of time, the actual time it took to prepare for the project was longer than the time it took to build the project. Um, so a huge amount of pre-contract work. And you can imagine when, you know, when we went into the bank manager and said, look, we want to build a 90,000 square foot building out in Valley Brisk. Well, telling them that you're, you're a possible tenant and you know, his eyes nearly popped out of his head. Um, so it was a real ch challenge to try and make everyone comfortable with it. You know, everyone in the industry was nervous, especially from a financial and legal perspective. You know, what's going to happen? You know, what sort of parent guarantee or HP going to bring to the table, you know, there's a lot of nervousness around it, so to get to, to secure development finance and to turn around that project was, uh, was a serious feat at the time. Um, just to give you a little sense of it, this is the actual building we built. Uh, on the left there uh, was the old football pitch, on the right is the old building, um, um, the new building on the left there is uh, three storey, divided into three wings with a central core, uh, very flexible building. It could work with, easy, quite easily work with um, nine tenants in that building. So again, that physical back to the design requirement. And we were ourselves, we had to be happy with it as well for the goal requirement. If HP, you know, when their lease expires or whatever, they were comfortable that what we're bringing to the market works for the goal of the market. So um, that's the design of it. And this is a couple of images of the of the finished building. HP are in it, they're very happy and um, hopefully they're gonna make it a bit bigger as well. Which would be nice. Again, great for Galway, you know. Uh, so I suppose the, the future um, 
for us, for MJ Conroy, is, is to continue and expand our high-end um, construction projects at the pharmaceutical industry and the, at, and the IT industry to keep aiming towards that sort of clientele that we've always aimed for and worked well with. Um, this is some of the current projects we have at the minute, again, Boston Scientific, doing work with, Met with uh, Mike out in uh, Medtronic, uh, HP, HP are expanding. We've done a new cybersecurity center for them in there, which is a phenomenal installation, actually. Um, Allergan, uh, Shannon Airport, Atlantic Aviation, and updating well, some stuff with the IDA as well. But it's, they're one of the partners that you always get, that you don't get contracts from them, but the people you're always talking to it's trying to aim to bring the property solutions to go then. Ties into my next point. That's what we'd like to do going forward, is to address the lack of commercial property solutions in Dola. Um, continue to expand our international operation. The Irish construction industry just threw down some thoughts on this, you know, where is it going to go and just echoing I suppose a lot of what John and uh, Mick said earlier, um, you know, the private sector has largely been concentrated in the Dublin area. There's been very, very little that's happened, uh, especially in the Galway region. Um, Interest to see what happens with the approach to risk by main contractors, in my own opinion going forward, you know, will we see the back of underpriced tendering going forward or, you know, where is where is that going to go? Because there seems to be a lot of the same vicious circle uh, turning. So, you know, I'd like to see something happen there. I don't know, to be honest, what can happen, but it'd be nice to see what could happen. Uh, the makeup of the Irish government, um, I'd like stability. <laughs> uh, we'd all like stability going forward. Um, and I'm not going to get into it, but the boost on how, how, how the government boost, ha boost housing, John covered all the numbers there. The VAT may be something to look at, or the, the, the proposed uh, development contribution rebate, uh, which would be interesting one as well, um, lack of infrastructure. Government finance and changes by government or the pillar banks on development finance might be something to target, you know. Um, we did bail a lot of them out. You know, we brought develop. You know, we approached them with development opportunities. You know, how eager are they for for risk? You know, um, you know, they all say they see lack of product in the market, but you know, how are they going to how are they going to address that? Um, it's obviously global concerns. You know, the euro area really concerning, um, and certain global outlook. outlook. Uh, the emerging economies, China and Donald Trump, for me personally, is a big worry as well. You know, it's um, the tra traction he's got in the states, and um, so that and the bre Brexit and the uh, the starting in the euro. So you, I, I very much focus, uh, or sorry, have not focus, have an awareness of the global outlook, um, because a lot, all of our clients are nearly their FTI clients. So again, it goes back to relationship and trying to get to know your clients so that you get to know their business so you have an appreciation what their worries are so that you know you can bring them to your own business and you know try and find solutions for them some prospects for the gmit graduates again what the guy said and nick went into it in a lot of detail there's huge prospects out there all local companies we're all everyone's looking for good graduates to come out of there and um, i threw in the bottom there uh, i know a lot of people that have come out of the property course in GMIT, I'd love to see a return of it, because uh, a lot of the people that went through it have done really, really well in the industry. Um, Martin asked me to put down a bit of advice maybe for students, and to be honest, I'm known to be giving advice, but I'd throw a bit out there. Um, think of your career as a series of experiences. Um, don't be like a horse with blinkers. And what I mean there for students is that when you go out into the industry, um, you know, you might go out and be asked to set out a building um, or do concrete cubes and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Whereas I would always be trying to reiterate to someone, you know, try and look what else is going on in the job. You know, first of all, why is that building in there? If it's a public building or if it's a private building, you know, who's the client or how it's being funded or how the guy is managing the job, you know. You know, what, I'm trying to find out what's the value of the job, you know, what's the program on it. Find out all the different things around it because if you just have the blinkers on, I feel that, you know, you won't see all the opportunities that could possibly come your way. Um, be passionate about your job. Folk, again, focus on the relationship quality. I think there's a huge amount to be gained by talking to loads of different types of people. Spend more time with, you, with people than your laptop. Easier said than done, but, um, you know, you, you gain so much from talking to different people, no matter what industry they're in. Um, 
learn how culture, learn culture. Yeah, we went to Australia. I'd love to go back, but had to come back and try and get through the good times, a long time ago now. Um, and be aware of the global marketplace. We're in a like the global marketplace is so small. We're we're in an international market. Don't just cocoon yourself into Galway, Dublin, Ireland. You know, you know, the construction market is is global. Try and get experience out there as well. Have fun. So that's it for me, and thanks to everyone for having me.